Since we have to be our own advocates here and we have to do our own research, I'm here to parlay some new information over to you. Some science regarding the world of vitamin C and vitamin D and how when they're actually combined is when the magic truly happens. So many companies will tell you that you just need to load up on one vitamin over the other. But the fact is, our bodies are seeking out harmonious relationships with all kinds of different vitamins and minerals. So if we start realizing these sort of cofactors that we can create within ourselves, we can biohack ourselves into not only feeling good, but also looking our best as well. So let's talk about vitamin C, the immune system, and the relationship with vitamin D as well. Hey, you're watching the internet's leading performance and nutrition channel with new videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, and other videos spread out throughout the week. So make sure you hit that little bell button so you can turn on notifications and also head on over to highleat.com so you can check out the apparel that I'm always wearing. Let's get to the science. So first off, the quick overview. Our immune cells, so our cells that go and hunt down disease and fight invaders, have what are called vitamin C transporters on their membranes. Okay, what that means is that these immune cells collect vitamin C and then have transporters that bring them into the cell when needed. Okay, so in essence it looks like this. Our immune cells collect vitamin C, but they don't actually internalize it and use it until we're sick. So case in point, we need vitamin C when we're sick. That's exactly why we're told to do so because our vitamin C levels will be at a nice level, they're just hanging out, and then all of a sudden we get sick and all of a sudden the immune cells are like sucking it in and then our levels deplete. So we're supposed to increase vitamin C in a supplemental form or through our diet to try to get those levels back up to homeostasis. Then once we're actually fighting illness and fighting infection, it's the job of the vitamin C to essentially give energy to the T cells to track and destroy illnesses. You see, we have different kinds of T cells. Some T cells go out and attack. Other T cells go out and flag, meaning some T cells just go out and put a label on illnesses so that other cells know what exactly to fight them with. So it's like you get a cold and the immune cell or T cell goes to that virus, puts a label on it that therefore tells another immune cell to come and kill it effectively. It's a very efficient system. But what we didn't know until recently was that vitamin D and vitamin C work very, very close together when it comes down to activating our immune cells. In fact, more than close together. They're imperative that they have an active relationship. You see, our T cells must be triggered. Our T cells normally, these are our immune cells, are just hanging out. They're just kind of chilling and they don't really do anything. But then what happens is they get triggered and they're asked to do something. Now what's interesting is research is showing that these immune cells, when they do not have vitamin D, they remain what we call naive. Now, that's a simple term, but in the case of the immune cells, it means they're dumb immune cells. They don't have the ability to do anything. Without vitamin D, they can't get activated. So what happens is the second that a dormant or naive immune cell is exposed to an illness of some kind or an invader of some kind, it sends out sort of a help beacon, okay? It sends out literally a vitamin D signal. And this vitamin D signal goes out, sends a signal out throughout the body, and it says vitamin D needs to go to this immune cell to activate it. So vitamin D runs to the rescue and it activates that immune cell. And then once that immune cell is activated, it becomes either a helper T cell or a killer T cell like I described before. The body dictates which one it becomes. But in essence, without vitamin D, immune cells never get activated. Now, we could start seeing a link there. Maybe that's why we get more sick in the winter time because our vitamin D levels are lower. We start doing the math, things start making a little bit more sense. But where vitamin C comes in with this is really, really interesting. And this is where we have to look at the research. There was a journal called Clinical Rheumatology that published a study, took a look at 20 female participants that were divided into two groups. Okay, one group of female participants was given 150 milligrams of vitamin C intravenously for 10 days. And the other half was given a placebo for 10 days. Okay, then they gave them 30 days to wash out and they did it again at 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C versus placebo. So what they found essentially was adding vitamin C into the mix ended up increasing levels of vitamin D, but only to a certain degree. Like if you mega dosed vitamin C, it didn't necessarily improve vitamin D. However, I will say, full caveat here, is that mega dosing vitamin C has a lot of powerful benefits in other ways, just not necessarily when it comes to vitamin D. So essentially what that means is that if you're in a normal balance and you're not sick, adding vitamin C in is gonna help your immune system be prepared to fight an illness, okay? Now, if you are sick, vitamin C levels have to increase because otherwise your vitamin C levels are gonna be low because they're reserved for fighting illness. 
This means that vitamin D is never getting activated and it causes a problem. So in turn, vitamin C ends up being a precursor to vitamin D for the immune system. The short answer is you should be combining the two together in order to have maximum effectiveness because they sort of feed off of each other. And the second that you're deficient in vitamin C, you're too late. The vitamin D already can't be activated and you've already done the damage. Your body is now overrun with a foreign invader and you're sick, plain and simple. So if you want to beat a cold or a flu, you really need to be supplementing with higher doses of vitamin C and moderate doses of vitamin D. Or in the instance where you can really have a balanced diet, you can eat the right kind of foods that are gonna give you that. So whether you're supplementing vitamin C and vitamin D or you're making a conscious effort to get it from your diet, you wanna make sure that you're getting them in balance. If you have ideas for future videos or you need more tips and tricks on how to fight colds and flus this season, make sure you put them down in the comment section below. As always, I'll be here lobbying for you. I'll see you in the next video.